Good afternoon. Welcome to Gator Preview Live. I'm Dr. Lee Van Horn, and in the next few minutes, we in the College of Public Service hope to give you a lot of information to help you make your decision to come and be with us at the University of Houston downtown. The chat is available online, and you can submit your questions to Leah Stoddard, who's there waiting for you. Near the end of the webinar, we'll come on and answer those questions. We have a group with us today online and another group with us here live in the studio. In the College of Public Service, we have programs dedicated to criminal justice, social work, and urban education. Our graduates serve the community in multiple criminal justice sites and as social workers and educators. In the College of Public Service, we strongly believe in the importance of relationships and meaningful connections to everyone we work with. We design our courses and our learning experiences to address the issues of our community members and to play on the strengths of our faculty and the talents and skills of our students. In the College of Public Service, we serve. Uh, I, I'm here in the beginning of the webinar with the directors of our academic programs in the college and I'd like to introduce them to you and then they'll begin to tell you a little bit about the programs. On my left, is Dr. Ashley Blackburn, the chair of the Department of Criminal Justice and Social Work. To her left is Dr. Dawn McCarty, the director of the Social Work Program. And to her left is Dr. Crystal Burnett Sanchez, chair of our Department of Urban Education. Dr. Blackburn, why don't you start us off? I would love to. Hi, everyone, and welcome again to the College of Public Service Gator Preview Live. Uh, I'm Dr. Blackburn, and I'm going to talk to you about our criminal justice programs here at UHD. So we each have some fun facts to share with you today, and this is our first fun fact about criminal justice. Did you know that criminal justice graduates not only are working in, in criminal justice professions uh, here in Harris County and beyond, but we are leading in criminal justice. And these are a few examples for you. Sheriff Ed Gonzalez, as well as Henry Gonzalez, who is the executive director of Harris County Juvenile Probation, are both graduates of criminal justice programs at UHD. Another example outside of Harris County is the Fort Bend Sheriff. And, and he is a graduate of one of our programs as well. So again, we are truly leaders in criminal justice. So we have two undergraduate programs in criminal justice. Uh, each of these programs will provide you a exemplary education where you will integrate theory, you will um, work with empirical uh, studies on criminal justice and, and how that research uh, has been applied in the profession, uh, the, app uh, the practical application of what we know um, through study and research. The two programs are the Bachelors of Science in Criminal Justice, our more traditional uh, degree, and then the second is the Bachelor of Applied Arts and Sciences in Criminal Justice, or our BAS degree. With each of these degrees, you'll be taking various courses on um, the, uh, the, the different parts of our field, from policing to law to corrections, uh, focusing on adults, juveniles, victims, and offenders. The interesting thing about the BAS is that you are able to apply uh, workforce credit or your applied arts and science, associ a science associates degree that you may have earned at a community or junior college that is CJ related. Um, if you have a TCOL or Texas Commission on Law Enforcement certification, you can apply those hours as well to the BAS. So it's unique in that way and, um, and, and one of uh, the only programs uh, in the area that allows you to do that for criminal justice. So another fun fact is that you are able to tailor your degree to your interests. You will see here on the slide uh, 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 numerous topics from law enforcement to law to corrections to victim services. Uh, and we have electives, elective courses that will count towards your major in all of these areas as well as others, uh, including juvenile justice, which I mentioned. So uh, in addition to what you will be learning in the classroom, in criminal justice, we also work very hard to have you applying outside of the classroom the content that you're learning uh, through your studies. 
So you may be doing this in service learning courses, such as our senior seminar course, which uh, uh, some faculty are heavily engaged in, in re-entry, uh, and other faculty are engaged in, um, in other service learning um, projects. You may uh, take part in a study abroad, our most recent study abroad focused on human trafficking and students were able to travel to the Netherlands and Sweden with Dr. Pfeffer, one of our faculty members. And we also have student organizations that you can join. Alpha Phi Sigma is our National Criminal Justice Honor Society and we also have the Professional Society of Criminal Justice Students, which is unique to UHD. And one of our faculty ambassadors who will be in the panel um, coming up shortly can tell you more about that organization and their activities. So the last fun fact I'd like to share with you is that you can make a very good living at working in criminal justice um, and, and in public service in general. These are a few examples of different areas of our field and the average salary that, um, that can be earned if you were to work in those fields from policing to corrections to the private sector. So finally, I'd like to talk to you about internships. We do have an internship or field experience program uh, with, that you can earn course credit towards your degree. You can um, t take this for three or six credit hours. And our field experience coordinator is also our career advisor, Dr. Beth Gilmore. Um, and she will be here in just a few minutes to talk to you more about those activities. And there you see a list again of the, the various career opportunities. There are so many. There's just too many to list on a slide and too many for me to talk to you about today. Um, but we'd love to talk to you more uh, about all of the opportunities, both that you would have here as a student on campus majoring in criminal justice, and also once you graduate, the, the career opportunities that await you. And now I'm gonna pass it on to Dr. McCarty, who will talk to you about social work. Well, thank you and welcome, welcome. We're happy to be here. We're happy to be talking to you about our programs in our college. Social work is a dynamic and diverse field. You will find areas of practice anywhere where there are people in need or people helping other people, they, then you will find social workers. So we end public service at the highest levels, uh, politicians, work, working with politicians, people in, in doing work to serve constituents, you'll find social workers. Social workers get the opportunity to serve through the arts as well. Any opportunity to address issues of social justice in places where we need change for the well-being of others, you'll find social workers doing good and meaningful work. And we invite you to join us. We have one undergraduate BSW degree. We are an accredited program, so once you graduate, you can sit even at the bachelor level for a license. You will become a licensed social worker. That is a great benefit to you in many, many areas uh, and makes it possible for you to work in many fields, in the medical field and mental health area. So that is a great benefit to students for our program, and we're very proud of it. A fun fact about our social work program is that we are a globally focused program as well as an urban focused program. We, our students just returned from India, which is wonderful, and we have another study abroad in Costa Rica, and we have ongoing research projects in El Salvador, Costa Rica, India, and elsewhere, in Mexico as well. So we are engaged globally, and that's a great benefit and asset in the classroom to students as well. There are scholarships for these trips, so don't think they're out of your reach. They are not. You can, you can go. Another fun fact is that we have very active student organizations on campus, and we do a lot of work in the community. You will be at the Ronald McDonald House. You'll be in many other places where, at Shriners, where we're working with the social workers in those agencies to provide service and to learn about the important work that they do. You can join those organizations even if you're not, except for our, our Honor Society, you can join our student organization before you become our major, so join in. Very quickly, you can apply to the social work program. We have a separate application process. You can do it, we'll help you. You can do it quite early, and many of you are probably ready to do it now. Just, you need 30 hours in total of college credit hours. Within that 30 hours, you'll need to have completed successfully your two English comprehension courses and your Common Core math requirement. And then we wanna see your application. So 
let's get let's get applied. We uh, so many topics to cover, like Dr. Blackburn said, so many things to do in our fields of practice. Public service is so expansive and getting greater so. In social work, our profession is growing. It's projected to grow quite substantially. And like criminal justice, we it's sort of a myth you can't make a good living. You can. And so we have some, some data, but also different fields of practice are different. It can be more, it can be less, but always and always meaningful work. So please come to visit us. We'd love to see you. We'd love to talk to you by email or by phone. And let's get to know each other a little bit better and see if social work is the right fit for you. I'm going to turn it over now to Dr. Sanchez. She's going to tell you about urban education. Okay. Thank you, Dr. McCarty. Um, welcome to the viewers and the prospective students out there. Like um, was mentioned before, I'm Dr. Crystal Burnett Sanchez. I am the department chair for the third department in the College of Public Service, which is urban education. Um, we purposely named our department urban education because we want to, because we do, prepare our students to work in uh, schools and school districts and campuses that have a large variety of students. We know that our Houston area is growing and there is a large uh, number of diverse students that we see throughout the Houston metropolitan area. So here's a list of our uh, degree programs. We've got, you, if you're interested in working in the elementary level, you've got the EC through six, the core subjects EC through six. If you're interested in working at the middle school level, you've got your EC, your core subjects four through eight. Um, and with both of the, with all of those, you will go away with either the bilingual or the ESL supplemental. With the bilingual supplemental, we're talking about Spanish and English bilingual, so you're able to work in um, a classroom with a bilingual classroom with bilingual students. Um, if you get the ESL supplemental, then you yourself don't have to speak another language, but you leave our program equipped with the skill set to work with students who are not native English, uh, native speakers of English. Um, the other Bachelor of Arts in Interdisciplinary Studies program that we have is one um, with the special ed. So you're, if, if you're interested in working with students it's with special needs at a variety of grade levels, that would be the special ed EC through 12, um, that also comes with the core subjects EC through 6, so you're well prepared to work with the the e, so pre-K basically through sixth grade, which is a large span. And in, ad, in addition, this one's chock full of, of certification, is that you also get the ESL supplemental. So if you think of this, you're pretty prepared and you're going to go to the top of the list um, when you're applying for jobs. We also have one um, degree, the Bachelor of Arts in, inter, in the Bachelor of Arts of Applied Sciences. This program, this degree program is not a certification track. But if you're interested in going to, into education, but we're not working on that certification, and you're in, really interested in working with your, um, like the EC through three grades, the lower, the younger children, then this might be the uh, degree track for you. A fun fact about the Department of Urban Education is that 87.4% uh, of our first year teachers uh, have a five year retention rate. Um, this is important because it means that our students feel confident in the classroom, they feel well prepared, so that they're not leaving the classroom very early. And this is a trend sometimes that we would see in education, that teachers, newer, newer teachers get frustrated and they leave the classroom. And so we're preparing our students well so that they don't feel that they have to leave the classroom in the early years. Um, similar to the other uh, departments, uh, the Department of Urban Education also has some opportunities for student engagement. Uh, we have four student organizations that are related to the department. We've got the Be a Teacher Club. It's kind of general. People are interested in becoming teachers. Uh, we've got the Bilingual Education Student Organization. Their focus is on uh, students who are not native speakers of English or who are bilingual individuals. We also have Kappa Delta Pi. It is an international educational honor society, and we have Urban Educators Literacy Society, whose focus is working with literacy and building the literacy skills. Um, if you look at the bottom of the screen, some of the areas where we might see our students, the Juvenile Justice Center is part of the class. They go and work with uh, students who are in the center, 
uh, to help develop skills. They've done um, book clubs and different things like that. So making their educational experience much more rewarding. We also have organizations and classes that go to the House of Tiny Treasures, which is a, an organization that works with students who are homeless, youth who are homeless. Um, and then, of course, we work with 14 different school districts, so our students are placed throughout the city um, and working and building that community network. Um, finally, a little bit of more, a little more information about the program. We do have, our program is 123 hours, which means that you're taking fewer classes than you would at other uh, universities. Now, although you're taking fewer classes to complete your degree, you actually have 720 hours of classroom experience, which is well above other uh, universities. Um, in our program, we've got what we call the PDs, or the Professional Development Semesters. There are four of those, and in three of those, you have field experience. So um, in PD2 and PD3, you have 60 hours in each one of field experience. You're in the classroom, again, different campuses, different grade levels throughout these experiences, and then you have your 600 hours of classroom experience during your student teaching. Um, so you can see you've got a lot of opportunity to work with the children, different backgrounds, and so on and so forth. Again, you're going to leave our program with the knowledge to work with either bilingual or uh, in, in a bilingual or an ESL environment. Um, and so you're really prepared to work in a number of different environments. Um, similar to some of the others, uh, the starting teacher salary is the low to mid 50s. Um, and with some of these, like the bilingual supplemental, occasionally with the special ed, you've got an opportunity to make a stipend, which is additional money. You can run probably the lowest stipend's about 1,000, so you can make an additional $1,000 above your salary. Okay, I'm gonna pass it now back to Dr. Van Horn. Thanks to all of you for giving everyone, all, all of our participants, such a grand introduction to the programs in the college. Now that you've learned something about the College of Public Service, you're probably wondering, well, how do I get admitted to the University of Houston downtown? Let's take a look at this film from UHD Admissions and find out what your next step will be. Yeah, I just got back from Costa Rica. It was a five week trip. Didn't you see all my posts on Instagram? We went to the volcanoes, we went zip lining, we did a lot of cool stuff. Yes, it was amazing. Okay. Well, I'll talk to you later. I'm by the elevators now. Bye. Excuse me. Yeah? I wasn't trying to listen, but I overheard a conversation about Costa Rica. Did you say you got to go there as part of a school trip? I went for five weeks, actually, with the Spanish program. Hmm. Can anybody go, or do you have to be selected? No, anybody can go. You just have to find the program that's right for you. Wow. Uh, I go to Lone Star right now. Well, I went to Lone Star, too. Are you thinking about transferring here? Yeah. Uh, was it hard for you? No, it was actually pretty easy. I was on the dean's list, and I got a scholarship here, so it, it was an easy process for me. But if you'd like to speak to a counselor, I can take you right now. Yeah. Okay, let's go. So what's your major? Communication studies. Oh, that's cool. Mine's fine arts. Nice. And here we are. Thank you. Hey guys, is there anybody that can help this student? He's thinking about transferring here. Sure, what questions do you have? Well, I'm currently at Lone Star and I want to transfer here next semester. Okay, so what you would need to do, um, I'm gonna go ahead and give you our transfer guide. It pretty much tells you on the steps on how to apply. You will complete an application in Applied Texas, submit your $50 application fee, submit all official college transcripts. Was Lone Star the only institution you've attended? Mm -hmm. Okay, so the admissions criteria that you must meet uh, to be considered a transfer student is 15 credit hours with a 2.0 GPA. Uh, once we receive all that, we'll be able to make an admissions decision. I have way more than that. I'm at around 45 hours and I have more than a 3.0. Uh -huh. Do I just uh, send all that in and I can register for classes? Well, not yet. So what we would do is uh, evaluate your transcript to see what courses apply to your degree. Mm. And then from there, you would attend orientation, meet with your academic advisor, uh, register for your courses, and then start with your classes. Okay, that sounds simple enough. All righty, well, I'm gonna go ahead and give you my business cards if you have any questions, okay? All right, thank you very much. You're welcome, you have a good day. Did you get everything that you needed? Looks like it. Cool, well, I'm gonna head back to lunch, but I hope to see you around next semester. Yeah, for sure. I need to get back to that conference. Oh, you can actually go through there. Oh, really? Yeah. All right, then, thanks a bye. lot. Bye. 
I hope you enjoy getting a glimpse on how easy it is to become a Gator here at UHD. As you can see, the process is very simple and we have a dedicated staff if you have any questions along the way. My personal UHD experience started when I attended an open house and I was sold on the small class sizes and now I'm a communications major here at the university. I use the lessons I've learned here at UHD in not only my personal life, but my professional life as well, and they've been instrumental in my growth all around. UHD has been a great fit for me, and I know it can be a great fit for you too. I'll see you around campus. Hello again. I'm here now with faculty ambassadors from the College of Public Service. Each one of them is an ambassador for their program and also an educator in the program, among their other duties, which you'll learn about in a moment. To my immediate left is Dr. Beth Gilmore from Criminal Justice. To her left is Professor Damaris Cortez from the Social Work Program. And to her left is Dr. Ron Beebe from Urban Education. We have decided together about a couple of things we'd really like to talk to you about. So we're going to have a conversation together. Join in and watch us. Um, first of all, would, I'd like to know if each of you would share with our participants uh, one or two of the learning experiences that a student in your program would be engaged in and could expect? Okay, um, I'll go first. Mm -hmm. So I think one of the things that we do really well um, within our college is that we take the content that students are learning in a classroom and we engage them in very meaningful experiences that they can connect um, what they've learned in the classroom to something that's happening in the real world. And so we do this in a variety of ways. Dr. Blackburn had mentioned earlier about how students get opportunities to learn from faculty members who have specialization in sex trafficking. Um, they get to learn things about reentry services, and that, so that's really exciting. Um, one of the things that I do in my classroom is um, I noticed that there were a lot of students that were really interested in crime scene or crime scene technology. I remember that. I remember you talking to me and asking me if we could get some supplies. Some supplies. Tell about this. Some stuff. Um, and so we did. So, so through funding through our college, um, we were able to get a lot of um, hands-on things for students to engage with in the classroom. So in my criminal investigations class, I have students that are learning how to fingerprint, how to photograph, how to set up a perimeter in a crime scene, how to classify prints. And so they're really taking what they're learning in the course text material and having hands-on experiences and they're really excited about it. We, so we, we do, do the same thing. We have a partnership with NASA and we bring astronauts and scientists on campus and then bring uh, students from elementary through high school onto campus to open houses, which gives our teacher candidates an opportunity to engage in hands-on science with real life scientists, as well as bringing an opportunity to students to see science up close, firsthand. Uh, and so our students now have a better idea of how do I make science relevant in the classroom? Where do I make connections? And I think that hands-on is really important. I think that's really neat. And it reminds me, at the, the first time we did this, we learned that um, many, many young people in the Houston metropolitan area had never been to the Space Center right. and had not had that close contact. So it was an opportunity to, in, a, in, a, in an issue to expand people's horizons. Very while we learn. That is so cool. When, if you think about expanding horizons, uh, I'm honing in on you. Let, let's talk. <laughs> so there's there's quite a few uh, different projects that I could talk about. Um, like the new study abroad that we have to India that we just got back from, which was a huge success um, academically, but lots of fun. And we'll be going and back again. There. I was there, yes. <laughs> I was lucky enough to be a co-facilitator. We'll be going back in December. And we also have um, a really unique learning opportunity in March, with, which is, um, which is uh, the Social Work Advocacy Day. And we take our students with us, whoever wants to join, and they actually get to participate and hands-on. They receive training, and then they get to speak to our legislators and advocate for social service policies. So wow, that's, that's a really tremendous cool. skill. Mm -hmm. When we talk about service, mm -hmm. if you know how to talk to legislators mm -hmm. and you can make a case yeah. for what's important for our community and citizens of our world, to have that experience as an undergraduate student is, is top notch. Yes, the students really like it to the point to where now our students that have participated are the lead. So one of our amazing students, uh, Stephanie Ramirez, she's the lead for this year. And um, she'll be visiting our students and telling them what she learned and um, be kind of like the contact person for them. Mm -hmm. So it's really, really cool. And uh, something else that we have, which is was a project, but now is a reality, is that we're textbook free. Now, yeah, yeah. which is super cool for 
two reasons. One, as social workers, we want, we believe that education should be free for everybody. We're not there yet. We're working on it. <laughs> but what we were able to do is become a, uh, this is our second semester as a textbook free program. So we get to choose the readings and learning materials for the students and we make it relevant to the student body, to um, our huge diversity, relevant to their families, uh, relevant to what's going on in Houston, in the state, national level, internationally. Um, so it's, it's really fun and a different way of, um, of learning, but it's also really um, helpful in that we want to lower the cost for our students. Buying textbooks mm. is so expensive, so it's you know it's got it, it's got those two benefits. Well, it keeps it current, mm -hmm. and and we in the College of Public Service are extremely proud of, of, of our program and social work for being the pioneer mm -hmm. in that at UHD. As I understand it now, many of our programs are working yes. on this with the library. But I like that uh, the resources are current. They yes. really are. That's yeah. fantastic. Wow. Mm -hmm. Well, I think we're getting there in our conversation, but I wonder if we can talk a little bit about how your program is, is particularly responsive to the diverse populations that we serve here at the University of Houston downtown mm -hmm. and to the demographics of our community. Because in the College of Public Service, um, that's one of our main fo foci. Well, we have a, a faculty member, Dr. Bhattacharji, who has mm -hmm. been focused on literacy practices for our bilingual students. So we have a lot of students in the community uh, who are native Spanish speakers, mm -hmm. and their parents may only speak Spanish. Mm -hmm. And literacy is such an important thing to, for, for students to know because it, it's, it's in mm -hmm. everything, mm -hmm. right? It's not, just, it's not just the English class, but you've got to read science books, you've got to read math books, mm -hmm. you've got to read history books, right? And so what our students do is our students actually go out into elementary schools, work with students in those schools to develop children's books. And so the children in those schools, they're the ones that tell that story. It's their stories, mm -hmm. right? And our teacher candidates go then and, and help them write it and then put a voiceover and there's a, an English version, there's a Spanish version, and each one of those books then at the end has follow-up questions to help with dealing with comprehension and, and those kinds of things so that it's, it's not just uh, a book, but it's a literacy event for them. And Dr. Beebe, how, those, those texts are now currently available online for anyone That's to correct. access. That's correct. They're electronic. And, and I, there's I think a you little over 200. About, yeah, 200. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, there, this has really enriched the world of, of the community. You know, what do you think? Um, I think that is so cool, and it's in line with what I'm going to speak about right now, which is our Spanish track. So our social work program has a Spanish track, and it's um, a swap of five classes, so you don't have to take any additional classes. And it's an option not just for native Spanish speakers, but also for someone who doesn't know how to speak Spanish, you can still join the Spanish track. It's a partnership that we have with the Spanish department at UHD. And it's, the Spanish track exists as a direct response from requests from social service agencies and organizations in Houston asking us if we could can do something, work together to make it possible to have more Spanish-speaking social workers. When I say Spanish-speaking, I mean fluent in a formal, at a formal level. Mm -hmm. um, the main agency that was requesting this from our, from our program and our students is uh, CPS, Child Protective Services, because a lot of times, actually most times, you have a uh, caseworker that is assigned to a family that speaks, for example, only Spanish and the caseworker only knows English. Mm -hmm. So oh, it's wow. gonna be really hard to, to mm -hmm. reach that goal of reunification of family and child if you don't even know how to speak the language, right? But, That's a huge barrier. But, but remind me, mm -hmm. wasn't it the case that there wasn't any social work organization in the city of Houston True. that had anybody that could speak Spanish? Yes, that was the case. So mm -hmm. we, <laughs> thank yes, you, thank, thank you, you for bringing mm -hmm. that up. Yeah. Super proud. That was a, a first only in Houston mm -hmm. program designed by our social work 
group. Yes. And I think, you know, as I think about that, it reminds me of a first only program designed by Dr. Beth Gilmore in criminal justice. Let's let's rock it. I think that one of the <laughs> I think that one of the running themes is that we are so well connected with the yeah. community. We are we are so well connected with the community and we're responsive to the needs that they have. And so when an agency or a member of the community has um, has a need that they need addressed, they know to come to us. And not only will they come to us to have that need addressed, um, but they know that our students can can serve them. And so it's a it's a dual relationship and that our students get something from that as well. Um, we recently in criminal justice had the opportunity to partner with the Houston Police Department. Uh, Chief Art Acevedo noticed that while HPD does have a lot of bilingual officers, they certainly don't have enough to meet the needs within the city of Houston. And so he partnered with us in a program called the Communicators on Patrol program. And what this program does is it allows our students who are bilingual, and it's not just Spanish-speaking students. We have students out in the field that speak Vietnamese, students that speak Udu, um, and they go out and they ride along with officers and they respond to all the different calls throughout the city of Houston. So um, from low-level calls to high-priority calls, and they in, in assist with interpretation. So our students are doing everything from assisting with interpretation on calls where um, there's a traffic accident and maybe people don't understand what's going on and they just need information and how to exchange information appropriately to things like um, sexual assault victims needing to provide information, um, parents whose toddlers wander out the back door at 2 a.m. Um, and we need to get descriptions of those children immediately. So it's, it's a huge impact. And it doesn't just allow students the opportunity to engage in those um, those relationships, but it also builds a really meaningful connection with people in the community, which is what we're all doing. Yes. We're engaging our students with the community and serving. One that's of our powerful. Main <laughs> yeah. No, that's, that's actually true. And responding to the needs of the community and innovating in our programs in order to do that gives our students opportunities that you might not normally get in an undergraduate mm -hmm. program. So they work alongside faculty and then as you can see, become leaders of other mm -hmm. students. And so we are actually collaborating with our community members and our students to create these great programs. It is, it is, it is tremendously exciting and exciting to be here with you today. Thank you. Thank you. Enjoying. It's always a pleasure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. So, um, Oh, uh, really? Yes, that's right. I, I could talk all day about this, and so you can get a little distracted. Pardon me. I did want to say at this point that we're now going to see a, vid a video about a financial aid, because now that you've heard about our programs, I want you to learn about the financial aid programs we ha have here at the University of Houston downtown, some of which are quite excellent and could help you, but you need to learn how to apply. So let's watch this video. Hello, this is Aaron Smith from the University of Houston Downtown Financial Aid Office, and today I'm going to be talking to you about your financial aid for transfer students. Apply for your FAFSA, which is federal aid for students. You would list your school code of 003612. Keep in mind, you must be award admitted before we can get you awarded. And also, transient students are not eligible to receive any aid. Aid at multiple schools. So if you're going to transfer from another institution, keep in mind that you can only have federal aid at one institution at a time. So before you were to come over to University of Houston downtown, you would have to make sure you cancel your aid at the other institution first. And if you don't do that step, it could delay your awards at the University of Houston downtown. Verification. If you're selected for this, keep in mind that you're going to have to turn in your 2018-2019 institutional verification form you and your parents' tax return transcripts and or W-2s and 1099s. And also, for students who did not file taxes, you're also going to turn in something called the IRS Verification of Non-Fouling Letter. To check your status, you're going to go to myuhd.uhd.edu. You're going to click on My Financial Aid and Scholarships Information. Log in with your student ID and password. Click on the Financial Aid tab. Outstanding requirements will be located in the eligibility section. Deadlines. Keep in mind that for this upcoming fall semester, the payment deadline is August 18th. You want to make sure you keep this in mind because 
If you don't have your financial aid status and it doesn't pay out before that day, you could possibly be dropped from your classes. So make sure you contact the cashier's office for payment options. Thank you. This was Aaron Smith from the Financial Aid Office of University of Houston downtown. All right, now that we've heard from admissions, financial aid, the dean and the chairs, now we're gonna take some questions from the audience that's been typing in online. So uh, with our first question. The first question comes from Lupe. Question, her question is, what degrees can I do in the College of Public Service as a fully online student? I'll uh, answer that question or be the first to respond. So hi Lupe, uh, it's uh, wonderful to hear from you. Thank you for your question. I'd like to say that uh, the criminal justice program, if you major in criminal justice, both of our degrees can be completed fully online. So all of the coursework, the required coursework as well as the electives can be completed um, in, in a variety of modes. but. Uh, one of those is fully online. Um, and many of the other departments, if not most of them, also offer online uh, coursework as well. If you're working on your lower division uh, or core courses, uh, you may have transferred those in if you're a transfer student. But as mm -hmm. far as criminal justice, you can complete your entire criminal justice uh, major requirements online. Mm -hmm. and, um, and, and I'm gonna uh, let Dawn speak to social work as well. Yes, social work is a bit different. We, because we are a professional program and you can sit for a license at the end of your degree, then we need to see you a little bit more in the classroom. However, we have uh, responded to student needs for flexibility, I think in some very creative and unique ways. So we, many of the early courses in the curriculum you can take online, we've, we've designed it to be so. Once you get into the practice classes, we have the option of hybrid coursework. So that means you're just in the classroom for an hour and 15 minutes once a week, and the rest of your coursework is completed online. And we find this a wonderful learning environment for students. We get to see you and work with you on your skill development and all the, the things you need to know as a social worker. But you also have great flexibility of not having to be on campus two days a week for a course. And so we're very happy with the, with the plan. I think students find it quite, um, quite flexible. Next, Paul asks, where do I send my transcripts? All right, for sending your, app, your transcripts into the Office of Admissions, uh, you can use our physical mailing address, or you can bring them in in person in a sealed envelope, but the best way to send in transcripts is electronically from your school, and that's uhdetranscripts at uhd.edu. Robin's wondering, do you offer scholarships for those going for a teaching degree? Robin, that's a really good question. I know a lot of people are interested in the affordability of a four-year education. Um, for students who are working on their uh, teaching degree, we do have some scholarships. Um, some of them, for example, would be like the court scholarship, which is money towards books or technology. You put it towards a laptop, for example. Um, we also have, and this is something in the college, uh, the Brown Scholarship, and that's a, an amount that you can also put towards textbooks, for example. Um, we have the Shanklin Scholarship. If you're interested, it's, it's if you want to do your first years of teaching at uh, one of the charter schools in the area, that is something that you could also apply for. It's, uh, I think it's $12,000, so $6,000 for two semesters, and that's a good chunk of change. <laughs> um, <laughs> And then we also have, as you're progressing through the program, we have the Kane Scholarship. So once you're a student teacher, um, a lot of the time student teachers aren't able to work as much because they are working, for, you know, doing their, what we may, similar to an internship, um, on the campus like a teacher. Um, but this scholarship helps to pay part of that tuition as well. And um, we're also working on another one. So by the time you get here, you'll have another opportunity. <laughs> On the money side of things, Esther wants to know, can I get financial aid as a part-time student? So as a part-time student, you can receive financial aid. However, make sure that you're in at least six credit hours per semester. Um, if you're in anything lower than that, unfortunately, we won't be able to award you financial aid. But if you are enrolled in at least six credit hours or above, we can award you financial aid to take your courses. Great question. Erica's wondering what careers are available for criminal justice majors? Well, thank you, Erica, for that question. Um, I think that we've talked uh, quite a bit about that during 
the presentation. And as I mentioned, criminal justice is uh, an extremely diverse field with numerous opportunities um, to to focus on, so uh, or areas to focus on. So whether you want to work with adults or juveniles, whether you want to work with offenders or victims, um, you can work with a criminal justice degree as a victim service advocate. You can work as a as a law enforcement officer, a police officer, a sheriff's deputy. You can work in institutional or community corrections. So if you're in the community, that would be probation or parole. You can work in criminal investigation. Um, so there are so much, or, or in the courts as well, so um, which is a major component, another major component of our field. So there are numerous uh, avenues for employment with a criminal justice degree from UHD. And as I mentioned earlier, uh, internships and service learning opportunities mm -hmm. often help you step right into those careers um, uh, upon graduation. Maria asks, if I want to start at UHD in the summer, when do I need to apply? Okay, the deadline for summer is May 24th, but you don't want to wait until the deadline. You can apply right now for the summer, actually. So the best thing to do is to apply early, so that way you get your application, your $50 application fee, all of your transcripts submitted, and then we can get you a decision. So the deadline is May 24th, but you don't want to wait uh, that long to get your application in for the summer. Sharon's wondering, when can I apply to the UHD social work program? And how many credit hours do I need? Very good question. This is a question many students have. And sometimes students wait too late. We want them to apply sooner than later. So you need 30 hours, 30 credit hours, which you could have gotten anywhere that transferred to UHD downtown or that you completed here on our campus. In that 30 hours, we need to have, you need to have completed both your English comprehension courses successfully and your math requirement, your Common Core math requirement. And so if it's a common, if it is accepted into the Common Core, then we also accept it. So that's it. You have an application that's online and we can help you with that. We'd love to answer questions about our application. So check in with us about that. Patrick wants to know, as a police officer, can I earn credit towards a criminal justice degree? If so, which one? Yes, Patrick, you can. Mm -hmm. So I mentioned earlier the, the BAS, or the Bachelors of Applied Arts and Sciences in Criminal Justice. And this is the degree program uh, that you can apply your TCOL certification towards. So the 24 hours of, of credit that you earned uh, through completing your Texas Commission on Law Enforcement certification, you can apply that directly towards BAS and it will count towards your, your academic degree credits um, for, that, for that particular program. Um, if you have advanced licensing through TCOL, you can apply even more credit hours. So all you would need to do is go to the TCOL website, print out your certification, um, and or it's a, a transcript, it looks like a transcript, and you would submit that to your advisor here at UHD, and they could get that credit transferred to your, um, your degree plan once you, um, once you are accepted and begin your studies here with us as a major in uh, the Bachelors of Arts and Sciences in Criminal Justice. Matthew asks, how do I turn in requested financial aid documents? Thank you for that question. So for the 2018-2019 school year, um, we are currently accepting documents through email, through fax, you can mail them in through snail mail. Mm -hmm. You can also bring in documents in person to our office, or if you don't have time to wait in the line, you can drop things in our drop box. Madison's wondering, what kind of hands-on field experience can I get before I graduate with an education degree? Okay, Madison, that's a really good question. Um, it's probably one of the more exciting parts of, um, of our program. So. Um, the way we have our program set up, um, we have something called the professional development semesters. There's four of those. So it's PD one through four. In PD two through four, you have field experience requirements. Um, so you get to go into a campus. In PD one, uh, sorry, in PD two and PD three, you'll have different grade levels and you'll have different um, campuses. So you get a variety of experience. 
you have to observe, uh, be observed in teaching a lesson. You'll design a lesson, create a lesson like that, work with the students hands-on, engage with, the co with your mentor teacher. Um, we have a field experience instructor who will come in, observe you for that lesson. Sometimes the students get nervous, um, but after all, they feel comfortable. They can talk about how, um, how well the, the um, lesson went and then areas that they want to develop for the following. And then, of course, you're going to have your student teaching, and that's that 600 hours. It's a 15-week um, student teaching, and you will be in a different, um, a, again, a different grade level prob probably, and this time you get to choose the district that you want to work. James is wondering, do you help social work graduates find jobs? We do. We have a close connection to every social service agency in this area and beyond, and we want very much to help students, and we do. Part of the social work education, the last part, the, and really the most important part for us, is the field experience. So students leave af leave the program after 400 hours in an agency and many times those agencies are very very happy to hire our students many times our students go into graduate school but, but if they're ready to work at that point then they go um, usually get a job offer from that agency or an agency they worked with while they've been in their field practicum it's a great opportunity to develop relationships and to show that agency that they should hire you Julia's question is, do I need to submit transcripts from all of the colleges that I've attended? Great question. We get that a lot in the Office of Admissions, so I'll give you an example. A student uh, goes to School A, takes some courses, then transfers to School B, takes some courses, and School B will have those courses on the transcript from School A. Then that student will transfer here to UHD, and we can see all of the courses from School A and B but we need official transcripts from each school. So the answer to your question is yes. Even though we might be able to see them, we need official transcripts from each school that you've attended. We want to thank all our viewers for their questions. We also want to let our audience know that if your question was not addressed, not to worry, we'll be following up with you after this event. We have one final question for our panel. Why UHD? Uh. That's a really good question. Um, I would say because here at UHD, especially in the College of Public Service, you're going to be well prepared. Um, we have engaging experiences, so engaging in the community and such. And of course, uh, the University of Houston downtown is a major opportunity. The reason why you're going to want to choose UHD from a financial aid perspective is because you're getting the most bang for your buck. We're the most affordable for your college in the in the city of Houston and we're the third most affordable college in the state of Texas so when you're thinking about college and wanting to pay for it and having the means to do so look no further come to UHD okay when I think why UHD you know in admissions we deal with students on the front end coming into school but I also went to school here I got my master's degree at UHD and in thinking why UHD it's the resources that we have available it's not just getting students admitted it's making sure that students succeed and graduate and so for me it's got to be the resources that we have available at UHD which is why I would say uh, to choose UHD so I think you should choose UHD because we offer such an exceptional educational experience here and it's why I chose UHD uh, as, a, as a faculty member to be able to work with such excellent students um, who are really engaged and, and want to do more than just the minimum of what's expected of them in the classroom. Mm -hmm. uh, also, UHD has so many support services, and that includes the faculty and the staff within the departments. It includes all of the different offices and divisions within the university who are here to support you uh, and to ensure your success and that you um, are not only a UHD student now, but that you will be a UHD graduate and alum in the future. Great. This campus is unique. And like our city, like our area, it's diverse and urban and thriving. So is our campus and so are our students. And so if you want to have the best chance, the best opportunity to to thrive in this community, 
this is the school for you. This is the university for you. You will be part of the future. We are the future already here at UH Downtown, and we're going to prepare you to be successful when you leave here. Oh, this is wonderful. I have no doubt that if you're watching this webinar with the College of Public Service, you are an individual who's interested in serving your community. People who major in criminal justice, social work, and urban education never ask themselves why they're doing what they do. Um, we, we are on fire from within, and we know that we're here to serve others. I am so proud to be a part of this university and to be a part of this program, and so excited to invite you to join us. I believe in the College of Public Service in particular, we are on the leading edge in education. I'll give you an example. Um, just last year, we received a grant um, to create a continuing education program for individuals with um, developmental and, and intellectual disabilities and so that they could have a continuing education. They have aged out of public school and they were affected by Hurricane Harvey. So we received that grant and we provided an opportunity for individuals who had never been to college to join us here at UHD and to be mentored by some of our existing UHD students across all of our programs at the university. Um, so in December that just passed, during our end of the year celebration, some of our students took the microphone and, and shared what the experience had meant to them. And something that I'm never going to forget is a young man who shared with us, I've been to middle school, I've been to high school, and then I was sitting at home and wondering what I would do and what would be next. And now I'm here in college, I'm meeting new people, I'm learning about things that will help me get a job. And I'm not alone, I have something to do every day. And it, it, it brought out a lot of emotion in us and in the peer mentors, our UHD students who had worked with them. And one of those students took the mic and said, I have learned so much and I have been inspired by the determination and courage of our new students and would never trade this experience for anything else. And she shared with us, I came to UHD a lot, but I've never been on campus more than, than now and being able to engage in this experience. So when you think about that, you think that the College of Public Service at the University of Houston downtown is where your world gets bigger and there's a place for everyone. And there's a, there's a place here for you as well. So uh, when you're admitted to UHD and you register, those of you who participated in this webinar, either online or here in person, we in the college have dedicated two scholarships to each group. So when you register and you're, when you're admitted and you register, your name will go into a drawing. And two of you who participated online and two of you who participated here with us today will each receive $500 scholarship towards your first semester with us. So come join us. We look forward to having you with us.